white horses with white frontlet plumes came round the rotunda corner, galloping. A tiny coffin flashed by in a hurry to bury. A morning coach, unmarried, black for the married, piebald for bachelors, done for a nun. Sad, Martin Cunningham said, a child, a dwarf's face, mauve and wrinkled like little Rudy's was. Dwarf's body, weak as putty in a white-lined deal box. Burial friendly society pays, penny a week for a sodded turf. Our little beggar, baby, meant nothing. Mistake of nature. If it's healthy, it's from the mother. If not, from the man. Better luck next time. Poor little thing, Mr. Dedalus said. It's well out of it. The carriage climbed more slowly the hill of Rutland Square. Rattle his bones. Over the stones, only a pauper, nobody owns. In the midst of life, Mr. Cunningham said, but worst of all, Mr. Power said, is the man who takes his own life. Martin Cunningham drew out his watch, briskly coughed and put it back. The greatest disgrace to have in the family. Mr. Power added temporary insanity. Of course, Martin Cunningham said decisively, we must take a charitable view of it. They say a man who does it is a coward, Mr. Dedalus said. It's not for us to judge, Martin Cunningham said. Mr. Bloom, about to speak, closed his lips again. Martin Cunningham's large eyes, looking away now. Sympathetic human man he is. Intelligent, like Shakespeare's face. Always a good word to say. They have no mercy on that here, or infanticide. Refuse Christian burial. They used to drive a stake of wood through his heart in the grave. As if it wasn't broken already. Yet sometimes they repent too late. Found in the riverbed clutching rushes. He looked at me. And that awful drunkard wife of his, setting up house for her time after time and then pawning the furniture on him every Saturday, almost. Leading him the life of the damned. Wear the heart out of a stone, that. Monday morning, start a fresh shoulder to the wheel. Lord, she must have looked a sight that night, Dedalus told me he was in there. Drunk about the place and capering with Martin's umbrella. And they call me the jewel of Asia, of Asia, the geisha. He looked away from me. He knows. Rattled his bones. That afternoon of the inquest. A red labelled bottle on the table. 
The room in the hotel with haunting pictures. Stuffy it was. Sunlight through the slats of the Venetian blind, the coroner's sunlit ears, big and hairy. Boots giving evidence. Thought he was asleep first, then saw like yellow streaks on his face. Had slipped down the foot of the bed. Verdict. Overdose. Death by misadventure. The letter. For my son, Leopold. No more pain. Wake no more. Nobody else. The carriage rattled swiftly along Blessington Street, over the stones. We are going the pace, I think, Martin Cunningham said. God grant he doesn't upset us on the road, Mr. Power said. I hope not, Mr. Cunningham said. That'll be a great race tomorrow in Germany, the Gordon Bennett. Oh yes, by Jove, Mr. Dedalus said. That'll be worth seeing, faith. As they turned into Berkeley Street, a street organ near the basin sent over and after them a rollicking, rattling song of the halls. Has anybody here seen Kelly? K-E-L-L-Y. Dead March from Saul. He's as bad as old Antonio. He left me on my own, yo. Pirouette. The Matter Misericorde, Eccle Street, my house down there, big place, ward for incurables there, very encouraging, our ladies hospice for the dying, dead house handy underneath. Where old Mrs. Reardon died. They look terrible, the women. Her feeding cup and rubbing her mouth with the spoon. Then the screen round her bed for her to die. Nice young student that was, dressed that bite the bee gave me. He's gone over to the lying in hospital. They told me from one extreme to the other.